What is up, YouTube? It is your boy, Vampire Blocker, aka VPB, aka Larry. Today is September 2nd, 2022. Uh, drop me a like, a comment. If you're passing through watching my videos, try subscribing, giving me a thumbs up or a comment. I'll try my best to get back to everyone. I'm dropping gems and truths. Um, I've been trying to drop these gems and truths for a long time. Try to make it to the end of the videos. We see how long you guys are watching that you're not watching the videos through. So therefore, you could be losing a lot of the gems and truths that I'm dropping. Now, a lot of you have gone back to school or you're going back to school, but I suggest you listen because class is in session right now. The professor is about to school you on what can help you throughout your life. Now, here we go. A lot of people have messed up. I get it past two, three years, there's been a lot of hoopla out here, a lot of YouTube influencers pushing you into different directions on what you should be doing. You should be buying crypto, you should be buying SPACs, uh, uh, meme stocks and dollar stocks and penny stocks. I'm here to tell you, it works for maybe, maybe a select few. And if you wanna gamble and think you're gonna be that person, go ahead. Best of luck to you. Let me know how it turns out. Uh, you can leave a comment on how it turned out for you 10 years from now, 15 years from now, 20 years from now. Um, chances are you'll be blaming the government. You'll be blaming minorities. You'll be blaming the white man. You'll be blaming um, you know, black people for taking your jobs, Latinos for coming across the border and taking your job, the immigrants for taking your jobs why you don't have money, you'll be blaming the government because social security is underfunded. Instead of just taking a really good look in the mirror and realizing you were the idiot that caused your own problems. Now, here we go. I'm here. A lot of people like to say, this is the greatest wealth transfer and this is the, re it's the great reset. Reset yourself. Don't worry about the world. Don't worry about the nation. Don't worry about anybody else. Here's how you reset yourself. Number one, breathe. Serious. Take time to take a deep breath in through your nose, out through your mouth, in through your nose, out through your mouth and take a good look in the mirror and admit you failed. The first thing to getting better and moving on to a better and bigger life is realizing you are your own worst enemy and you failed. It's okay. We all fail. But here's what you need to do. Now, here's what I would do if I was in your situation. Breathe, admit that I failed, and here's what I would do. If you have five and six, seven different investment platforms, oh my God, you got M1, you got Webull, you got E-Trade, you got Schwab, you got Fidelity, you got Vanguard, you need to condense them. You need to Start from your lowest balance of everything and get rid of them and create an investment strategy where you have two, like, two brokerage houses. I suggest two well-known brokerage firms that have been around before you were born, before your parents were born, or when they were born. Something like Fidelity, Vanguard, Charles Schwab, T. Rowe Price, they've been around a long time. I rock with Schwab, I rock with Fidelity, and my uh, annuity through my job it, uh, is Prudential, but they were bought out by Empower. Now, condense them. Every year you're waiting for tax forms to come for, from seven different brokerage houses so you can file your taxes. That's stupid. That's, that, that's what you need to do is condense them first, okay? Condense them. Figure out how much debt you have. If you have credit card debt, take the two smallest brokerage, whatever you're using, for example, M1 Finance and Webull. If you have $5,000 in debt, but you got $6,000 in investments between those two brokerage things, cash them out, pay off your debt, boom, you're done. You just knocked out two birds with one stone. You knocked out your uh, credit card debt or whatever debt you have, and you got rid of two brokerage houses that you don't even need because they just came out and you don't know what their long-term longevity is going to be. Whatever money you have left over for that, okay, I'm a fair guy. If you want to YOLO a little bit and 
you know, splurge on yourself with that extra thousand. If you just paid off your credit card debt, go out and have a nice dinner with cash and say, okay, this is the beginning of my life and here's how it's going to happen. Now, here's what I would do. I would delete any YouTube influencer in the past two and a half, three years who's been touting spats, who's been touting cryptos, who's been touting meme stocks, who's been touting penny stocks. I would delete every one of those. I would unsubscribe those YouTube influencers. Here's why. Chances are those same people who've been pumping cryptocurrency to you and SPACs and these risky stocks, chances are they also have a product they've been selling you to, whether it's uh, a book on how to buy real estate, a book on how to buy cryptocurrencies, classes on how to trade stocks, classes on um, on uh, how to buy stocks and real estate and cryptocurrencies. They have um, uh, platforms or they have software with dip finders on how to get the best stock at its lowest intrinsic value. You need to get rid of them. They're selling you products. You don't need products. You there's no guarantee their product is going to work. And if it doesn't work, all they have to say is, hey, you didn't follow the steps right. You didn't do it right. You got to get rid of them, people. Like I said, the YouTube influencers that over the past two to three years have been riding the crypto wave, the SPAC wave, the meme stock wave, they're selling you dip finders and how to buy stocks and how to trade stocks and how to find the lowest. If they have something that they're trying to sell you, they're salesmen. That's all they are. Get rid of them. You don't need them. You don't. Because there's a lot of uh, content, as Joseph Carlson would say, content. There's a lot of free content up here that you can get that's free that has worked over time. Now, I would definitely, um, I would create a budget. I would say, all right, I'm going to invest this amount every month, this amount every quarter, every year, or every month or whatever. This is what I'm going to invest, and this is what I'm going to save. Some people, uh, that like myself, for example, since 2016, I've had my foot to the floor and socking money away, investing and saving. I'm taking my foot off the gas. I am. I... I already got the plan in place. It's already autopilot. I know it's going in what every month. I know how much index funds is buying. I know how much money goes into my dividend portfolio. I have my set amount of stocks that I buy every month. I dollar cost average into certain stocks. I look at what I think is a value and I buy into those dividend stocks. Now, while doing that, make sure your debt is low. Don't take your foot off the gas when it comes to paying off debt. When your debt is paid off, and a lot of you are going to click the video off here because you don't like hearing paying off debt, but when a lot of your debt is paid off and you're already where you want to be at an investment uh, aspect where you're comfortable and you're going to be a millionaire regardless because you have a plan and unless the world falls apart, I know some of you doomsday people are, oh, I could, yeah, I could. And if my sister had a, she'd be my brother, but she's not. When you get that plan in place where it's automatically being invested, you can kind of take your foot off the gas. You don't have debt. You don't have a crazy overhead. This is all done. I don't got to throw 70% of my net worth in investments. I can do 30 I could do 25, I could do 40 and still enjoy cars. I love cars. I could still buy cars and travel and do things like that. But you want to create a budget. You want to have a budget in place where just in case things crash, you're protected. The only people that panic during a crash are the people who are not prepared. If you're prepared, I mean, it's, it's kind of like another day at the office or it's kind of just like another day. You're like, all right. We knew this was coming. It always comes. So we're good. Have a budget. Once you get to where you want to go, excuse me, once you get to where you want to go, you can kind of take your foot off the gas. Now, uh, three, make a real life investment plan that you can stick to. 
Some people go 100% into investing, but they're living broke and then they get discouraged and then they don't want to do it no more because they don't have a life. Some people, they don't invest nothing and they're broke and they can't invest. You want to create a balance. You want to create a balance that's good for you. You know, that comes with making a budget. If, I mean, I always say you can have the best of both worlds. You can have the toys, travel, travel the world and have nice cars and have nice things and still know your future is going to be taken care of. I mean, it's a lot easier when you pick really good uh, index funds and really good, um, you know, portfolios and stuff like that, because, you know, over time, it's grown over time. So many people like Jack Bogle and Benjamin Graham said so many people look for the needle in the haystack instead of just buying the haystack. I prefer to put 90 percent of my money. 80, it's between 80 and 90 percent into index funds. And the other percentages are into dividend stocks, long-term dividend stocks that I'm holding for the long term. If you're not going to hold a stock for five minutes, five days, excuse me, let me edit that. Um, well, I'm not going to edit that because I don't have editing software and I really don't care like that. But anyway, if you're not going to hold a stock for five years to 10 years, you shouldn't own it for five minutes, five seconds, or or the 10 minutes. I buy stocks for the long term. I look at my stocks as a apple tree. I plant them in the first couple years, I might not see any real fruit. But within a couple years, I'm able to eat the apples off that tree because it's grown and now it's sustaining my hunger and now I can live off of it. You know, I don't have to go out there and work for apples when I have an apple tree that's paying uh, that that that's feeding me apples and putting money in my pocket. So that's what I mean. Take your foot off the gas. You can take your foot off the gas after you put that plan in place and you plant those seeds. You can kind of take your foot off the gas and go, okay, I'm good. I can breathe. I don't got to watch my portfolio every day, every month, every, it's just going to do what it's going to do. And there's going to be fruit there. So I recommend buying stocks that you plan on holding for five to 10 to 20 years or even a lifetime. Hold them. Don't ever sell them. Hold on to good dividend stocks, good growth companies that pay dividends that are going to pay you over time where you can kick back and relax. And if you don't feel like going to work for three weeks, you're good. So um, I would wait to buy a house or a car. Now's not the time to buy a house or a car because you don't know if you're overpaying. And if you are currently in the market for a house or a car right now, you will be overpaying. I would wait. I'm going to come out and say I would wait a year to three years. I would really stay where I'm at unless you're in a dire need of a car. Your car has just broke down. The mechanic says, listen, it's going to be four grand to fix this car. You might be better off getting something a little clunker, nothing brand new, nothing with payments. Just get something that will get you back and forth to the bus stop or where you got to go or run the errands. That's what I would do. Um, I wouldn't buy a house right now. I would really wait and to see where we're headed because we haven't felt anything yet. A lot of people think we're in a recession and no, you haven't felt anything yet. You, 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 you really haven't felt what's really headed this way because See, here's the thing. People keep kicking the can down the road and eventually there's no more road. Eventually all the garbage piles up and then we got to deal with it. And when we have to deal with it, it's going to be catastrophic and it's going to be bad. That's why you want to have cash set on the side um, to protect you when that time happens. Um, let's see. I would get my partner on board. I would tell my partner, listen, this is what it's got to be. Um, you know, Tell your partner, whoever you're with, this is what we got to do. We got to cut back on ordering pizzas. We got to cut back on going out and drinking. We got to cut back on going out with friends. We got to cut back on going out with, with people who spend a lot of money who, who can't do things for free. You got to do that right now. You really got to cut back and you really got to take this time, this fall, this winter and, and don't overspend for Christmas. You know, tell your partner, listen, we I mean, we're, we're going to do a hundred dollar gift. Or we're going to do a hundred dollar experience. We're going to go for a walk. We're going to go to our local town center and we're going to look at them like the Christmas tree in our town. We're going to go for a walk in our town and drink hot chocolate 
and we're going to get like, you know, a, a little Danish. We're going to sit in the park, freeze a little bit, look at the, all the pretty lights. You can walk around your neighborhood and look at Christmas lights with your partner. That's free. You know, you don't got to buy Gucci and Louis Vuitton for your partners and stuff like that. You really don't got to do that. That doesn't show how much you love them. Spending time with them really shows them how much you care about them and how much you love them. Because remember, if you're going to be with them and you're looking to spend the rest of your life with them, when you retire and grow old with them, you're going to have a lot of time with each other. You want to know the person you're living with and you're retiring with because a lot of relationships, they fail. A lot of sports players and actors and athletes, when they retire, they end up getting divorced. Why? Because their relationships worked when they were at work all the time. And then when they're around their partners, they realize they really don't like each other, that this really doesn't, that, that like we really don't click. Take a look at how many police officers or firemen or, or detectives or people who retire early and then they, that they're at home with the stay at home person. And, and then it, it doesn't work anymore because one person was used to running the house. And now you got another person who's now home and they're trying to call the shots. So it doesn't work. Now, if you were a person who worked every day and your spouse was at home taking care of the house, I'm sorry to break that to you, but the house, that's their job. That's their business. You're walking into their domain. You got to respect them. If they've taken care of the house while you were at work taking care of the finances, um, if they respected you and let you call the shots when you were working, guess what? You now stepped into their turf and, hey, I mean, that's all I got to say about that. Like now that's their domain. You're in. That was their comfort zone. And whatever steps they have on routines they have, you might have to fall in line with that. So make sure you have hobbies where you're not around each other all the time. And start getting in shape. Um, you can go to your local park and work out. It's free. I mean, you can do push-ups on a bench. You could do laps around the park. You can jog in place. You could jump rope. You could do pull-ups. You can, you can do things that are free that you don't need to have a personal trainer. Um, you don't need to be paying for a gym. You don't need to be doing all this high-end training CrossFit stuff. You could do it yourself. You can go on YouTube, search a video, uh, prop up the video on a bench, a tree, or something, put your earbuds on, and follow along. You can do it. It's free. So many people, they just think they have to pay for greatness. You don't got to pay for greatness. You know, greatness most of the time is free. This video is free. All it takes is your time to follow this video. So I hope you made it this far. If you have any questions, um, hit the blocker up and I'll do my best to get back to you guys. No regrets, handle your business and stop following people always selling you stuff. You know, well, um, how does that song say? The best things in life are free. There's something but the birds and bees. Yep, yeah, there you go. No regrets. Have a great weekend.